this is the place, but... I'm sorry, Clive. There's no weapon spared. What do we do now? We keep looking. Man's Hill cannot be the only place where snow daisies grow. Perhaps, but... It's the only place I know of. You of. Then why not ask someone who might know of another? Someone at the backyard? To the hideaway, then. Let's hope one of the gardeners knows where to find snow daisies. Say what you will. you down from the heavens, Sid? I need your advice. Joshua and I are looking for a place where snow daisies grow. Preferably in abundance. Snow daisies. Then you'll want somewhere not too hot and not too cold. And where the winds are strong enough to carry the seeds. Uh, I reckon Man's Hill would be a good place to start. There in the Royal Meadows, perhaps? Both have similar climbs and the right elevation. If the Blight hasn't claimed them yet. Right. Thank you. Did you learn where we might find our flowers? The gardener here mentioned the Royal Meadows in Sambrak. Ah, the fields beyond Northreach. Well, if that's the case, then Yote was right. I recall that she kept the record of our travels, you see. So I asked her if she'd perhaps noted anywhere that snow daisies grew, and she mentioned Oilerfeist Bay. Whose shores border the meadows. Off we go then. What do you think that thing is?
Quinton. I have a proposal for you. Do you now? Something tells me you'll be asking more of me than a cask of goat and gold. Go on then. Propose. You'd have me convince the chiefs and chamberlains of the realm that they should simply swallow their pride and do the one thing that has proved impossible for thousands of years. Was there anything else? Perhaps I can fetch you a meat pie as well. I know it's a lot to ask, but I can think of none better suited to the role. And you'd have me give up what little I have left to do it. I told you, Clive. The people of Lost Wing are my family, and I cannot abandon them. You'll have to find someone else. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> so am I. And why might that be? What he's asking? How is it any different to what you've done so far? They want you to speak for those who can't speak for themselves. That's what you do best. <laughs> if it's the vineyard you're worried about, we'll see that the grapes are picked and the tons filled. You know we will. It's not that. Then what is it? You said yourself we're family. Don't you trust us? You know that's not what I'm... Then what are you saying? that only we are worth saving. Why turn your back on everyone else? You convinced us we could build new lives for ourselves, and if you can do that, who's to say you couldn't convince the entire realm? A stirring argument. I fear that any rejoinder I make might fall somewhat flat by comparison. So you'll join us? <laughs> Where do you need me? Field Marshal Havel will want to speak with you in person. He's currently in Port Isolde. I can arrange for a party of Cursebreakers to accompany you there. That would be very much appreciated. I hear the roads are far from safe these days. <laughs> Hopefully not for long. My uncle will want to know that his plan is taking shape. Nazaire might at least have mentioned where in Northreach he'd be testing this recruit. I'm nervous. Well met, Sid. This is the Initiate. Ember, present yourself. At your service, Master. Please, just Sid. There are no Masters here. Your life is your own. Oh, of course. Thank you, Sid. The Sergeant says you'll be evaluating me at my trial. To become a scout, yes. You are aware of the dangers inherent in that role. I am. But I swore I'd face them. Just like the man who saved my life. And who would that be? Gav. It was him who found me and freed me. No magic, no support, just one man and his nose. Came and sniffed me out. It taught me what one man can do if he puts his mind to it. And I've been training ever since. So that one day, I can be someone's saviour, just like Gav was mine. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be flattered. You clearly have good intentions, Ember. And it sounds like you're under no illusions. Stick to this path and you'll make a fine curse breaker. So, what? Have I passed? <sighs> you haven't even started yet. Now listen. Not far from here is an Imperial lookout, East Watch. The guards there record all their sightings in a logbook. You are to find it and bring it here. And bring it here, right. Anything else? No. Sneaking into a heavily guarded Imperial outpost and stealing the logbook would be quite sufficient. You will need to assess the situation, determine a point of entry, create a distraction and effect an escape all without being discovered and thrown into an Imperial oubliette. Ember, Gav isn't our best scout because he can do everything. It's essential that you know your limits. 
Know my limits. Right. I won't let you down. <sighs> it shouldn't be as dangerous as I made out. But keep a weather iron him all the same, would you? On my way. All right, Ember. Impress me. A fortress? The garrison is threatening to pull their sentries from the market. I would speak with this Jew. Saw the captain just now. Hang the Jew. You have a moment, Clive. What is it? It's the Duke, unsurprisingly. His eminence has assumed full control of the garrison and put every able-bodied man to work on the fortifications. The town was left all but unguarded, so Philippe was compelled to form a citizen's watch to fill the void. And though my dear boys have been characteristically willing to assist him in this, they want for bodies. So I was wondering, if you would lend them your strength, that the people of Northreach might sleep easier, if only for a few nights. Of course. Whatever you need. Thank you, Clive. What would I do without you? Philippe told me he had men stationed at... Where can I find the mistress of this establishment? Here, my lady. To whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? My name is Sabine. And it is my displeasure to be the daughter of the Duke of Oriflam, who I understand is causing you and your town no small amount of trouble. I wish to speak to you about what might be done. Very well. Let us speak. I trust you'll forgive me, Clive. Absolutely. Our conversation can wait. Please, proceed. As you know, my father is a most overbearing and supercilious man, and I join you in objecting to his every action. Indeed, I owe you my thanks for continuing to argue against his reckless plans. Yet I fear he is not one to be swayed by reason. No, he must be made to face the consequences of his actions. And who would make him do this? I would. Myself and several other like-minded individuals. Were you to join us, we would surely have the strength to drive him from Northreach for good. Does that not seem a trifle... drastic? Drastic action is precisely what is called for. Unless you are content to see your people downtrodden and dispossessed. My father would have it that citizens exist only to serve the Empire. That they should be forced to make every sacrifice to ensure her revival. But he is wrong. It is not the people who must serve the Empire, but the Empire who must serve her people. He's always been like this. Scornful of the opinions of anyone he judged beneath him. But he cannot be allowed to ride roughshod over the common folk any longer. We must fight him. By all possible means. Fight him? No. My purpose is to quell the tension in Northreach. Not to stoke it. Respectfully, my lady. Our only chance of saving this town depends upon every one of us uniting against our common enemy. Your father and his followers included. While I understand your frustrations, I cling to the hope that he may yet be won round. False hope, I assure you. But I see that your mind is made up. I shall bother you no longer. If you will extend me the same courtesy, I bid you good day. She certainly has spirit. Indeed. 
But unfortunately for us, that spirit is only likely to harden the Duke's resolve, which may be enough to seal the fate of this town. Not that she cares. This is all about her and her father. Families. I'm sorry, where were we? Ah, yes. I was about to tell you of Philippe's plans for the town watch, but perhaps it's better that you heard them from him. I believe he's in the market, if you'd be so kind as to seek him out. Right away. It's just a pity I cannot join you. I'd like to see the two of you in action together. What she said? The Jew won't stop it. than I expected. But Founder, it was worth it. They're beautiful. 
Do you think Jill will like them? She'll love them. Come on. Let's go. It appears my work is done. The rest, as they say, is up to you. Well, you and the skies. We wouldn't want another thunderstorm now, would we? Uncle, I bring good news. The Field Marshal has agreed to your plan. Of course he has. I didn't doubt you for a moment, dear boy. Rutherford is accompanying him back to your manor in Port Azolder as we speak. They will await your return there. As will one other. One other? Who, exactly? Lord Havel was concerned that even if he could get the realm's armies to agree to an accord, he might not be as successful in convincing those with political power. He asked if I might have a solution. And I suggested a certain Imperial Lord Magistrate turned Liberator. One of your co-conspirators? Master Quinton would probably call me one of his. But yes. Another outlaw, then. Just the thing we need to put these rotten politicos in their places. Good thinking, Clive. I'm glad you approve. The more the merrier, eh? Uncle. Assuming Havel and Quinton can solve our problem with the armies, you still haven't mentioned how we might manage the grain shortages. Oh, don't you worry, my boy. The seven high houses will be seeing to that. They have all agreed to make the most generous of donations. Oh, of course, it did take a little persuasion, but luckily I had some unexpected help. From who? Why, you, my boy. Rumor has it that you rescued the Lady Ariane's head steward, Rockford, from a horde of bloodthirsty bandits. It was more of a handful. Well, the old battleaxe was so pleased. She had a shipload of talents delivered to my private docks by the next new moon. And when the other houses saw the parsimonious old crone's purse strings finally loosen, they as good as tripped over themselves in the rush to follow suit. <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. Now... I must be getting back to the manor. Join us there at your earliest convenience, would you? Of course, Uncle. And how, pray tell, will we get that grain to the capital if the roads are still overrun with Akashic? You find another bloody road. I only have so many men, and I'm not about to send them headlong into an ether flood. That is, unless you'd have them turn as well. Well, I'd certainly eat less. Oh, says the man with a belly bigger than a band of curls. My soldiers actually need their rations. Without any food to keep them going, they'll be dead even before you've sent them on your fool's errand. <clears throat> if I may, gentlemen. Perhaps I might suggest an alternative approach. Though supply routes are indeed disrupted, there is no shortage of ships. Indeed, they bob away in every bay from here to Randalar, awaiting a safe haven. Allow them to make port and fill their bellies full of grain. And once those who crowd the cities are fed, ferry the displaced back to the countryside to work the fallow fields. Ah, but I'm sure that you wish to continue your discussion. Forgive the interruption. Two such firm friends as yourselves need no help from the likes of me. Rutherford spoke fondly of the great bond between you. Us? Friends? I can't stand the man! Clive, I'm beginning to question the quality of the company you keep. And what kind of company are you expecting him to keep? The man's a criminal! Criminal? How... how dare you! You are not fit to breathe the same air as this... Fine! Upstanding young gentleman! Upstanding? 
He calls himself Sid the Bloody Outlaw! Once more unto the breach. <sighs> Shall we begin again? What we seek here is not to create a new nation, nor to claim the thrones of those that already exist. We wish simply to bring stability to the realm that mankind might weather the current storm. And to do that, we must convince those in power, the generals, the statesmen, the nobles, that our cause is just. There will be disagreements, yes. And I imagine some resistance, much resistance. But we cannot let that deter us. If we show them the path, show them that we walk it ourselves, then I am confident they will follow. The fate of the world lies in my nephew's hands, but the well-being of her people lies in ours. And we must not squander the chance that Clive has given us. Uncle Byron, I... Now, with that settled, let's move on to the signing of the Accord. For what great moment in history hasn't been accompanied by a little ceremony? <clears throat> Citizens of Valisthea, I present to you the Triunity. Rutherford, Mike Will. Well, my boy, the stage is set. That it is. This is the role you were born for. Now I ask only that you trust in the talents of your supporting cast. We shall play our parts to the best of our abilities, that you might have the opportunity to shine. The realm needs its Sir Crandall. And there is no better Crandall than you, Clive. I, uh... I want you to keep this signed accord as proof of our faith in you. I will. Thank you, Uncle. Distraction is what it is. And how the hell is it going to do? Jill, there's something I'd like to show you. There is? And where might this something be? It's, uh, not here. Now, I know this is sudden, but how would you fancy a trip to Oriflam? There are so many. This is what you wanted to show me. I, I, I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. The smile on your face is enough. We've been worried about you, Joshua and I. 
Do you remember when I took you to Man's Hill? Or <laughs> tried to? <laughs> How could I forget? You saw me crying and thought a change of scenery might lift my spirits. In the end, it earned me a nasty cough and a stern scolding from your mother. <laughs> but I felt wonderful nonetheless. I'm sorry. I had no idea what I was getting us both into. But I couldn't bear to see you like that. Before we left, my chambermaid told me she'd overheard your mother talking about my marriage prospects with some of the noblewomen at court. They were debating whether it would be more profitable to marry me off to one of the high houses instead of saving me for the ducal line. No one thought to ask me what I wanted. I was nothing to them. A pawn at best. I felt so trapped. So lonely. I didn't know. But I wasn't alone. You were there. Your hand in mine as we ran for those oaks. And I knew then, no matter what happened, I would be all right. I'll never forget that feeling. Before we broke camp, the morning after the storm. Do you know what I did? No. What? I slipped away from my governess to climb the tour. And from there I saw a sea of petals, all reaching for the sun. And I realized... No matter how terrible the night, dawn would always come. That, that you... That you would always come for me. And you have, again and again. Where do you see us? When all this is over? I don't know. Not here, though. I think I've outgrown the twins. After everything we've been through, the realm just seems so small. I'll need some space to spread my wings. Then... That's what you'll have. And I'll stop at nothing to see that you do. much good at garlands, but it'll have to do. I'll treasure it forever. Thank you, Clive, for this, the flowers, for everything. It's exactly what I needed. You are my treasure.
We should probably be getting back. I expect the others are wondering where we are. You're right. There's still much to do. And we'll do it together. What can I do for you? I do like a customer who knows what he wants. Come back again. We have our coin, our stock and our stock. So you are content to abandon... Please, I beseech you. If you are a true son of Northreach, you must fight to defend your home. That's exactly what I am doing, milady. Or trying to, at least. The land is crawling with fiends, and someone has to keep watch. Even when our true enemy is hiding in the garrison? Fine. You're not the only able-bodied man in Northreach. Thank you so much for your help. She cornered you too, then? Could hardly get a word in edgeways. Like father, like daughter, eh? She made an uninvited appearance at the Vale earlier, hoping to convince the Dame to join her in fermenting rebellion. <laughs> I bet that went well. Her ladyship seems to have a way with people. Anyway. What brings you here? Our mutual friend thought you might welcome some help. Oh, she did, did she? <laughs> right as always. In fact, you're just the man. We've had some reports, you see. Sightings of... Uh, you know what. They're back. Seems that way. All over, too. We haven't been able to confirm anything yet, but if you're willing, you could go and see what's what. Right. Where should I look? You know Grieger's Weep? One of the sightings places them somewhere on its shores. I'm on my way. Thank you, Clyther. I'll look into one of the other sightings. Let's rendezvous back here later.
finished. <sighs> Call that a test, Ultima. Clive, it's me. Are you all right? I am. But it seems the reports were true. The thralls have returned. I dispatched the few that I found, though. Well, that's something, I suppose. But what were they doing south of town? They all came from the north last time. We might be able to fend off an attack from one side or the other, but from both? Do you have eyes in the north? Some. I should probably go and have a look, though, just to be sure. Now, you head back to Northridge. I want you there just in case war breaks out while I'm away. What do you mean? Her ladyship's been busy working her magic on the townspeople. Stirring up ill feeling towards her father. But she'll have her marching on the barracks if we're not careful. What? This is exactly what the Dane was afraid of. I'll do what I can to calm things down. Be careful out there, all right? Don't worry, I'm not like you. One sniff of those things and I'm running back to town screaming blue murder. Do you not see, father? The people of Northreach have given enough, and only a fool would ask for more. Listen to me, Sabine. Where would our people be without their country, hmm? The Empire is their sword and their shield. It is she that ensures they can live without fear. And now she teeters on the brink. Without their sword, how will the people fight? Without their shield, how will they protect their kin? Can the unarmed stand against the advancing hordes? No. But there is yet hope. A new shield, a new sword. A new empire. We can rebuild Sandbrek, just as great Grieger wills it. Perhaps we could, father. But we don't want to. Not if it is built on the broken backs of the people. Please, let us not quarrel in the street. You must see that no good will come of this. Our fight is not with each other, but with the threat that draws ever closer to our gates. A threat that your sword has yet to rid us of, your eminence. You will hold your tongue, whore! You may have filled my daughter's head with your heresy, but I will not be corrupted! Corrupted? Your daughter's opinions are her own, as you would know if you had ever deigned to listen to her. At least I hope they are your opinions, and not posturing born of a family feud. Northreach deserves better than that. Northreach deserves better than you, Carla! Yes, I know who you are. The slut of Twinside who bedded a brandit. <laughs> Jealous, are you? That a woman might choose a bearer over a pious man of Grieger. Clive! I met a swarm of thralls coming south from Oriflam. Hundreds of them. Too many to count. God, oh, so fuck you. If no work on the fortifications has scarcely begun. We will retreat to Cair Norvent and there make our stand. Did you hear me? That was an order. While this is but a heartfelt plea, let us make our stand here and protect our homes. Protect those that we love, together, for Northreach! You heard the dame? What are we waiting for? Pikemen to the gates, archers to the roofs, quickly, come on!
But she is but a common whore, yes. And we'd follow her to the gates of hell. The men have their orders, and they look like following them. I got them spaced out at regular intervals. Whichever direction the thrall strike from, there'll be someone there to meet them. Thank you, Philippe. Rest assured, the people will play their part. The herbalist has donated her stock of medicines to me. Should any of your men be injured, take them to the Vale. We'll see to them there. Thank you, milady. I will. I'll play my part too. You still want for numbers. Unlike the enemy, I only hope I can go some way to evening the odds. Philippe, can I leave the south in your hands? I doubt the thralls by the lake were the last of their number. Of course. I'll lead a party down that way so we don't get taken by surprise. What about you? I'll make my way up the road to Oriflam. I fought a few of these things. And while I can't promise to hold them all back, I should be able to thin the herd. All right, but take care. Thank you, both of you. You can thank us when it's over. Till then, madame. Let's go. Fly, Ambrosia. There are so many of them. <laughs> Not for long.
That looks to be the last of them. I wonder how the others fared. Better hurry back to town. Come on, Toggle. Clive, it's good to see you. And you. The road to Oriflam is clear. How did you and your men fare? Well, we ended up fighting for our lives down by the lake. Took a few nicks, but nothing the girls of the Vale can't put right. Glad to hear it. Well, it seems we've survived. For the time being, at least. I thank you both for answering the call. You were right. And I was wrong. About everything. I had thought that the only way to unite the people was under the banner of Empire. That without a strong hand to guide them, they would drift apart. To be borne hither and yon by the eddying currents of fate. But you brought them together. Not by force. nor by the exercise of goddess-given authority, but by simply being one of them. By knowing what they feel, because you feel it yourself. Our purpose was ever the same, Your Eminence. You were merely distracted by a loftier vision of empire and glory while our eyes beheld matters closer to home. You have the right of it again. As did you, Sabine. His radiance said it himself. Sandbreck is naught without her citizens. I forgot that. And I am sorry. I'm sorry too, father. I should never have taken things so far. I only wanted you to understand how the people felt. How I felt. But my anger got the better of me. Do not blame yourself, my dear. This was my doing. I should have listened to you. To all of you. Your eminence. Your ladyship. I do not doubt that you came here with the best of intentions. But I believe the same could be said of us all. We all want safety, security, prosperity. Not just for Northreach, but for the entire realm. And we may yet achieve it. If only we work together. Will you join us in this? Yes. We shall. Thank you, Your Eminence. Now that that is settled, I must go and see to the wounded. The Vale's doors are always open to any soldier in need of relief. And today, there are more than ever before. Madame Isabel is a rare soul indeed. In these dark times, I see that it is not men like me who should lead the realm, but women like her. You're right. If only I'd listened to her when I had the chance. Forgive me for saying so, my lady. But you still do. The dame said it herself. We can turn things around. We just have to work together. And that goes for you, too. You're one of us now. One of you? Well said, Captain. Let this be a new beginning. Not only for Sandbreck, but for us. Well, since there's nothing more to be done here, I should see if Isabel needs any help moving the wounded. <laughs> 